Hey guys, and welcome back to GCC. I'm Damon, and today I want to talk about this, which is my new Asus uh, VivoBook 15. It's the uh, Ryzen 5 2500U. Model number is the uh, F505ZA-DH51. So 2500U with eight gigs of RAM, uh, a 256 gig M.2 SATA SSD, um, 15.6 inch IPS display, 60 hertz, nothing super fancy, but yeah, yeah. But it's uh, it's a little bit limited. So as as most of us know, uh, Ryzen really prefers memory speed and bandwidth. So right now, this laptop is only running in single channel mode with eight gigs of soldered 2400 megahertz RAM. So I'm gonna upgrade it with this HyperX Impact kit. It's a eight gig SODAM at um, cast cast <laughs> at cast latency 14. Uh, so hopefully that will help this guy out. From what I read online, um, and this laptop doesn't support anything faster than 2400 megahertz. So I'm hoping that by going with a lower latency, we'll get a, uh, a higher, uh, a, a greater score than if we went with a um, 2400 megahertz, like cast 16 or 17. So I guess let's, uh, let's get into it, huh? So one, one thing that I really dislike about this laptop uh, is how you access the hard drives and the RAM. So typically, uh, what you do is you unscrew all the screws on the bottom, and then uh, you can either lift the lid or remove like a separate little access hatch for just the RAM or just a hard drive, something like that. This laptop doesn't do that. It doesn't have that. So uh, what you do is you unscrew all these screws, I think there's 12 of them on the bottom. Instead of the uh, whole bottom panel coming off like you might expect, uh, the keyboard comes off, strangely enough. So uh, you actually go in through the keyboard rather than just taking off the bottom panel. I have no idea why they would make it like that. Uh, I guess many of the Vivo books are the same way. I, I couldn't tell you why. It makes no sense. It makes it a much harder thing to do, so I'm not, I'm not a fan of that at all. Okay, so the 11 screws are out. There are none under the feet. Some, uh, some models of the Viva Book line have screws under these uh, rubber feet. This one does not, so don't worry about that. So now what you do is you flip it over. You turn off the laptop, because I didn't do that yet. There we go. Okay, so what you do is you begin to separate the keyboard from the laptop body. So I'm gonna go grab a card or something to get in there and unsnap those clips. All right, there we go. So I think last time I had a little bit better luck going in from the corners. Yeah, looks like that's gonna work. Insert it like that. Oh. I'm just gonna run it around the perimeter of this panel. Okay, so at this point I've got the laptop ready to go. I've got the keyboard fully unclipped along with the trackpad. There are two ribbon cables under uh, the trackpad area. So what I'm gonna do is spin it around and very carefully lift it up to get eyes on those ribbon connectors. Reach in and unclip them. Keyboard is off. <clears throat> so now what we have to do is remove the battery and the mainboard. Yay, Asus. God, they made this. So if, if all that you're doing is installing a two and a half inch drive, you can do that right here. So you've got one screw here, here, here. So three screws, you can slide back the drive cage and slot in your two and a half inch drive. I think it has to be uh, exactly seven millimeters. So you can't have like a, you know, four terabyte, nine and a half inch millimeter hard drive. 
But if that's all that you're doing, you can do it right here. If you want to do another dim, though, you gotta, you gotta remove the whole main board. So that's, uh, that's kind of stupid. So I'll, uh, I'll start doing that now. So real fast, I just wanted to uh, go over those two ribbon cable connectors that I had to get access to. So you have two. You have the big one here for the um, keyboard, and the small one is for the trackpad. So all that you do is you lift up on these two little black pieces. So you can see they kind of fold down and hold the connector in place. So fl flip those two up and then pull them straight out. That's all you have to do. So uh, first, I'm going to remove the battery. So you've got one screw here, one black screw here, okay, so there's the battery, it's out. I'm just going to put those two screws back into the battery so that I don't forget where they go. So there's a lot of little screws and they're pretty much all different. So it's uh, you know, shitty, but it is what it is. So now if I recall, you do have to remove the two and a half inch drive cage, which I'll do right now. So there's one screw there, one screw there, one screw there. And then this whole piece just slides back lifts out, and then there is your state of data and state of power right there. So you can screw in your hard drive on the side here, slide it into place, and you're good to go. If so, that's all that you're doing, then uh, you're in good luck. So there's a little ribbon connector right here for this daughter board for your IO, for your SD card, and stuff like that. So what you can do is you just flip up the white piece on this one, flip the white piece, and use the ribbon connector's blue little grabber and pull out that cable like that. Uh, there is a small wire right there. So undo that connector, pull that back a little bit. And uh, you can see we're already getting pretty close. So there is one screw here. One screw here. And don't forget your wireless card. So undo the wireless card. You can leave the antennas where they are. All, all that you have to do is slide back the actual wireless card so it is not connected in any way. Like that. Okay, so now we should be free. I'm gonna leave the display connector in place because Last time that I messed with one of those on my iMac, I uh, damaged it, so I don't really want to do that again. So what I'm going to do is just flip it up. And now you can see the heat pipe. So sodium slot goes here, blower fan, M.2 SSD that can be replaced with a PCIe SSD. And then there is your heat sink over your, uh, your chip. So if you wanted to replace the thermal piece paste on that or do what Linus does in a lot of his videos and put on some liquid metal, you could potentially do that. I'm not advocating that. I'm just saying it's a possibility. You could also, you know, jump off a bridge, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying you should do that either. So, before I break this display connector, I'm going to grab my sodium, put it in, and then snap down into place. Ta-da! Now we've got 16 gigs of RAM. So now we get to undo all that for literally three seconds of putting in that that sodium. It took all of that. So I'm gonna start putting this back together again. So just to verify that everything works before I snap everything shut together, I'm gonna power it back on now and uh, see if everything works. Okay, come on computer. Well, that's not a good sign. Well, that was dumb. I just had the ribbon connector for the keyboard upside down. Don't, don't, don't bother. I'm sorry. Okay. And we've got a post. Yay, Windows updates. 
So let's start with a CPU ID of CPU Z. So going, going over to memory, we have dual channel, 16 gigabytes at 2400 megahertz. It's got, it's listening 1200 megahertz, but it's dual data rate, data rate so it's 2400 megahertz. Uh, cast latency, <laughs> 17. Ass. Well, all right, fuck. The cast latency 17 is something that I had not anticipated happening because uh, there's online retailers that sell this model of uh, Asus VivoBook with that exact DIMM, the HyperX Impact 2400 megahertz, cast 14. I had assumed that it would run at the speed that they sell you. I don't know why I, why I would assume that. I was wrong. All right, so I just got done doing some testing in Borderlands 2. So previously on single channel at 720p, I was, I was hovering right around uh, 18 to 22-ish frames per second. Um, and now dual channel 720p, same settings, I'm um, hovering between 30 and 50. So it's a, it's a pretty big pretty big jump. Obviously it depends on what part of the game you're doing, what, you know, if you're in combat or not, stuff like that. There's dips here and there, but it's definitely a much, much more enjoyable experience. It's much just smoother and um, doesn't stutter pretty much at all. So now I'm in um, World of Warcraft uh, on the three setting, which is the recommended one. 1920 by 1080 at 100% resolution scale. So it's the graphics, graphics quality three preset. And in Boralis, I get a super solid 30 frames per second in the you know in the middle of the town with everyone running around on their fucking weird ass mounts and stuff. So that's 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 a big improvement. Um, before I, I had to drop the resolution scale quite a bit in order to get nice frame rates in Boralis. Um, so let's fly to somewhere and see. So uh, we're flying out of the, out of the city now. Uh, we're, I'm up on a griffin flying around and um, now I'm up to 45 frames per second, 46, 48. So when you're out in the world in Boralis, even with textures having to load pretty quickly and stuff as you're flying, right now I'm at 52 frames per second, 1080p, 100% resolution scale. Uh, it looks great and it runs great. This is this probably will be the game that I play the most if I'm uh, at school or something or you know if I have a, if I have internet access and a break between classes or something. This is what I will probably play because it looks great, it runs great. Um, uh, with Ryzen Adjuster, I've got it set to 30 watts of TDP using the the pre uh, preset slider adjustment. You set it to 30. It does everything that it needs to to get that happy. And um, with an uncapped frame rate right now, I'm, I'm at 52 frames per second, 51 frames per second right now. Uh, CPU temp is 63 degrees C, so not not too warm by any means. Um, I'm really happy with this. This makes me really really happy. Borderlands 2, I I just I don't know. It was definitely better at, at, at 720 is definitely better, but there was uh, a lot of stuttering and uh, hiccups here and there and uh, frame drops, even with dual channel memory. Uh, and this is the type of performance that I expected, was um, just solid, solid graphical performance. So what are my thoughts about this laptop um, and this CPU specifically? This laptop is less important to me. Um, I, I got this one primarily because it was cheap. It was on sale at Newegg and uh, I knew that I wanted uh, a Ryzen laptop because I wanted a little bit more graphical horsepower than uh, until uh, HD graphics can can provide right now. Uh, it sounds like, side note, it sounds like they've uh, had a, a pretty big br uh, breakthrough and that next gen um, onboard graphics should be pretty potent. So that's that, that's really exciting to see them actually really um, try and make, make, make strides there. Anyways, um, this laptop, this, so wow, this, this game is like, is really making me happy right now. This is exactly the, the type of performance that I was looking for uh, and that I wasn't getting before with single-channel memory. 
the laptop as a whole, I, I, I really like. The cooling solution isn't too loud. So right now, like I said, it's, it's rock solid at 63 degrees C. It seems like it's fully saturated. It's the highest temp it's gonna get. Um, right now I'm in the mid 40 frames per second and in a game like WoW, that's fine. That's perfectly playable. Uh, it feels nice and smooth. In a game like, like Borderlands, when you're around 30 frames per second, it can feel a little bit jittery, you know? Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate all of your guys' support. It means a lot to me. Um, this is something I've been wanting to do for a while. I have been using my wife's old 2012 MacBook Pro uh, for school for the longest time, and the only game that, that thing can run pretty much is like Limbo, <laughs> which was like an Xbox 360 arcade game. I'm really, really happy with this laptop, and I appreciate you guys watching, so I'll see you in the next one.